Chinese father and a mother who was black. Uh, and the reality of the life of Chinese in Cuba and their participation in the revolutionary struggles. And Chui said, well, that's a great idea, but I have an even better one. There's three of us who are generals of the Revolutionary Armed Forces today who are of Chinese origin, and why don't we interview all three of us together, uh, and it'll be much better. And he was absolutely correct, because in, the, in their stories, you get the richness and some of the variety of the experiences of the Chinese in Cuba and their, their history. Uh, then, they, then they, in order to be able to better understand it, there's another ch a second chapter of the book which goes back to deal with the history of Chinese immigration in Cuba as Chuck Kwan was describing. Uh, but the interesting thing about this it's not, it's not, is understanding the uniqueness of the, the, the size and the weight of the Chinese uh, population in Cuba. The period that Chuck was talking about, from the mid-1800s mid to about 1875, the, the, in absolute numbers, the numbers of Chinese that went to Cuba and the numbers that went to the United States were almost identical. But the population of the United States at that time was 38 million, and the population of Cuba was 1.4 million. And you, just from that fa one fact alone, you can uh, begin to appreciate the weight and the place of the Chinese uh, immigration to Cuba in the history of that country. Uh, the, 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 um, all three of the Chinese generals today also fought in Angola as part of the internationalist mission of the, that was carried out by the Cuban Revolution to aid the, the, the independent struggle of Angola and the defeat of the South African apartheid army that invaded the newly independent Angola in 1975. So the, 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 that whole chapter of, of the history, of their history, is also included in the book. But with all of that history, <laughs> rich as it is, still I think the most interesting and the richest part of the book is the final section, which talks about the responsibilities that these three uh, leaders of the Cuban Revolution still hold today. Uh, Armando Choi, as I mentioned, is head of the port of Havana, which is responsible not only for the trade, related, trade and, and, and infrastructure of the port, but for the, 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 the environmental cleanup program that, is being, that, he is, he, he, that he is helping to lead today to, uh, to, to reverse the, the literally centuries of pollution of, of the Havana Bay and the entire tributary basin. Uh, he talks about those experiences. Seal Wong, who's the head of the state reserves today in, for all of Cuba, uh, and also played a very instrumental role in helping to reorganize agriculture in Cuba in the years, in, in, the, in, in the 1990s, when they faced extremely <coughs> difficult economic conditions when they, as, after the collapse of the Soviet Union uh, and all of their trade relations with the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe, uh, and the, re the organization of, of small-scale urban agriculture throughout the country was decisive in, o in, in overcoming what they faced then. And it, it was, and Xiu Wang describes how part of this, and an element of this, was drawing on their Chinese heritage and going, and uh, where he, you know, he explains, of course, that he said, well, of course, before the revolution, uh, the overwhelming bulk of the fresh vegetables production in, in Cuba came from the Chinese uh, Chinese uh, population that was part of the production of this. So it was going back to some of those traditions and roots that helped them surmount that, econ that, that economic crisis. Uh, throughout this all is woven, as Colleen mentioned, the, the theme that Xiu Wang and Choi and Chui keep returning to over and over. What is it that makes the experience of the Chinese in Cuba different from elsewhere in the Chinese diaspora throughout the Americas especially? Uh, and that fact, as Xiu Wang explained, was the socialist revolution in Cuba that, that, that not only eliminated the institutionalized discrimination against blacks and Chinese, but it changed the economic foundations on which those relations were built and opened the door to the much, much deeper and much more challenging 
historic battle to eliminate all forms of prejudice that stemmed from that kind of discrimination. It's this story and, and knowing about this genuine history uh, that is so important uh, to those of us who, who live not only in Cuba, but elsewhere in the Americas. And that's why Pathfinder publishes books like this, to make, them, to make that story and that, that history available. Uh, I want to just end by saying ex what, explaining what the other side of this. That is what I know I learned in the process of working in this book and what many of us uh, who worked on it shared. Um, that is, there's no way that you can begin to dig into the history of Ch the Chinese uh, emigration to Cuba and its rich interconnections as Chuck was mentioning, with the United, with immigration elsewhere in the Americas. Why, why was it that 5,000, some 5,000 Chinese left the United States in the 1870s and emigrated to Cuba, where they were being in, in, in progressively uh, playing a bigger and bigger role in the independence struggle in Cuba, in a, a struggle that was totally intertwined with the battle for the abolition of slavery and the abolition of all forms of indentured servitude. And it's especially appropriate, I think, to mention that today, which happens to be the 200th anniversary of the abolition of the slave trade in the British Empire. Not slavery, but the slave trade, which it took another uh, 50, 50 or 60 years uh, to, to, to bring to an end in this hemisphere, including in Cuba where slavery was not abolished until finally, completely, until 1886. Um, but you see, this, it, you, you cannot get into that history without wanting to know more and more about our own history in the United States and here in Canada. Um, not only the history of the exclusion acts, the property, the exclusions, the pogroms, the laws against intermarriage, the head taxes, the laws on business, Chinese businesses, and all the rest. But it, even more important, the resistance to this, the struggles against it, and the proud history of the struggles uh, of the Chinese people throughout the Americas uh, along this along. This. That was great. Our, um, I just wanted to say, I've noticed some people are standing in the back, and there are some seats at the front if you want to come down and take a seat, you're more than welcome to join us. Um, we're moving on to the discussion part of our, uh, our event. Um, I guess, first of all, I wanted to see if any of the panelists had any questions for each other. Because I know <laughs> some of you haven't had a chance to uh, meet each other. If not, we'll take questions from the audience. Do you want to make I just want to, um, this, this is the 250th uh, anniversary of the, uh, no, the 60th anniversary. Yeah, the Chinese came on June, I think June 5th. It was the date of, uh, and they marked this in Chinatown. It's a big parade, uh, lion dance, and uh, all kinds of things happening in Havana, Chinatown. And I think uh, both, of, both of us will be there as well. Uh, I'm going to be there to present this film first time in Cuba um, to the Long Kong Association. And uh, the singer you saw, his name is is Damien Hui Li. Uh, he's known as El Chino de Carnaval, which it means the Chinese from the carnival, because for many years he sang and danced at the uh, carnival in Havana, uh, and he's known to be the Chinese Nat King Cole. <laughs> 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 um, the the song that he sang in the first place uh, is called Fantasia Chinesca which was actually written by a Cuban, uh, Julio Brito. Uh, he became a Hollywood composer, but he wrote this song. And again, this is one of the references I talked about where uh, Cubans have written uh, songs about uh, Chinese in Cuba and then Barrio Chino especially. Okay, so I think um, we're going to maybe take three or four questions and then the panel can answer a number of questions. The Exclusion Act came as a part of the wartime alliance 
not because of the you know the Chinese fighting in, in for, for U.S. imperialism. Uh, so it was it was uh, it, it was, and even when they redid that, even when they repealed the Exclusion Act, they set a quota on Chinese immigration of 100 people persons per year, which remained in effect until 1965. Um, so the. Uh, uh, I think that 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 that, that pattern and, and that, that, those, that those different historical com uh, factors coming together are important. The, uh, the the other thing is that the 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 the, the discrimination, the integra the integration of Chinese and Cuban society uh, comes a, a, a comes as part of the revolutionary struggle to for independence. The revolutionary struggle to over to abolish slavery and indentured servitude, the revolutionary struggle against U.S. imperialist domination, the, the revolutionary struggle against to overthrow the Batista dictatorship, in, and and the and, and and the making of the socialist revolution. It's in that it, in in those common struggles together that the barriers have have, have fallen. Uh, and which, in, and the, the, the totality of which, is what makes uh, the experience of Chinese in in Cuba, I think, so so so, so deeply different uh, than elsewhere in the Americas. Okay, so I think that'll end our formal. invite you to some tea and Chinese buns if you're interested. Um, please feel free to come down and have some refreshments. And also I wanted to announce that some of the organizers are going to be meeting after, so if you're interested in continuing this discussion, I believe we're meeting at the Regal Beagle something. Yeah, so anyway, if you're interested, please ask one of us and we'll let you know.